Let's go, Brandon. Good job, man. Good job. Because what, what Brandon FPV has basically done, he's basically created something that is superior to Coat King, and there's more of it in a tube, and it costs less, and it's uh, it's it's clear as opposed to slightly yellow, and it uh, seems to work better on on the uh, on the first uh, coat and so yeah I mean good job man good job I'm really pleased with that I was going into this kind of expecting this was just gonna be like another knockoff like you know not really any better than Coat King or any different but this is definitely different from Coat King and I definitely recommend this FPV worry free over Coat King also, I mean, good move with the branding because FPV pilots are probably going to want to buy something that's called FPV Worry Free and has, you know, Brandon FPV name and branding on it as opposed to Coat King, which is RC coating. And there's not a whole lot of like familiar branding with this. And it's like, who are they? Where do they come from? You know, you don't know. Whereas this, you got the face of Brandon FPV, who's a professional FPV pilot. And you're like, oh, okay, yeah. So yeah, good move there, man. All right, I need to go buy another tube of this and coat everything. So, all right, sweet. Welcome back to RC with Adam, and that is the bottom line on FPV worry-free. Hope you enjoyed that. We're going to talk about some important details and disclaimers in just a second, but first I want to say thanks to our sponsor for today, PCB Way. PCB Way makes custom printed circuit boards. So if you have some kind of cool DIY project and you can draw up a circuit board schematic, you can send that over to them. They'll make it for you. They got all kinds of options and they can actually uh, put it all together with your custom electronic selection uh, on the board and put it all together. It's just amazing. It's amazing. You just got to go check them out. Also, they do rapid prototyping uh, and they've done some of that for me and it's turned out quite nicely. So they do 3D printing. They do injection molding, uh, sheet metal, uh, CNC machining, all kinds of different stuff. So if you're working on a DIY project, definitely go check out PCBA Way, link in the description. Now let's get on with this video. Now, first thing I wanna get out of the way right away is uh, Brandon FPV did send this to me for like a dollar to test out. So technically I paid for it, but technically it was also heavily discounted. But either way, you know, that's not enough to make me say that something's good just cause they send it to me. This in fact is much better than Coat King and we're gonna see why in this whole video. This is gonna be kind of a long one, but I wanna give you all the details just in case you are interested in it. The second disclaimer is that this is just a workbench kind of laboratory, <laughs> laboratory uh, sort of setup and I haven't actually tested this out on a quad in the field yet. My main concern about that would be potential overheating issues that you might have by applying such a thick coating of waterproofing material. But other people have flown this a lot and I haven't heard of any issues about overheating and it's winter time right now so it's gonna be a while till I can test this out in the summer. And you can see in the side by side, the Coat King is very yellow compared to the FPV Worry Free. And the FPV Worry Free seems to drip a little bit more. It's been maybe about two hours. The FPV Worry Free is like, it's not even really tacky, but it's like grippy. Whereas the Code King is like, you can see it grabs my finger like that. The Worry Free feels way more solid, far more pleasant texture. It doesn't feel like it's going to stick to a bunch of stuff, which that could be actually a really, really big deal. So it has been not quite 24 hours. Now these things are like fully cured. The FPV Worry Free it basically feels like a silicone caulking. Um, it's grippy, but it, it it's not sticky. The Code King um, is definitely sticky. It's actually sticky. Like it doesn't leave a residue, but it, it kind of grips my finger and it's it's definitely softer. All right, now it's time to actually get some ESCs and put the FPV worry-free on these guys. I'm using two different ESCs for this test. I'm gonna use a small one like for a quadcopter and then this larger one like for an airplane. Now this has a heat sink on it. As this you can see, I just sink. took it off right there. But what I wanna do is actually leave right the heat apart. sink on and I'll be waterproofing kind of around pad, those FETs, and, we and we'll see ESCs that in just a second. But first, very, very we've clean. got to put some alcohol on this and do a little scrub-a-dub to, uh, you know, clean it up and get everything so it'll stick the best. And here I'm going to take apart the small ESC and do the same thing with the alcohol. 
Here we go. Let's just start applying this stuff. Now I've learned from previous, uh, from the previous tests with Code King, that really you need to apply a lot. You really don't want to wimp out. So just put a bunch on there. Because it will kind of ooze down. And it won't be as tall as you would think. See that right there in the middle? See how there's like a tiny little spot where it hasn't quite gotten to it? If I just kind of... I'm just going to add a little bit more right there. And it's pretty thick right now, but it will ooze down. Actually, it looks like there's a bubble, so I'm going to kind of move that around a little bit. So it's been about an hour. Let's see how goopy this is. So it's still kind of squishy. It did not drip as much as I had thought. Right here, it's actually not covered. I don't know if that's gonna be a problem or not, but that'll probably drip over from the other side. Very tacky, but it doesn't seem like it's going to ooze anymore. I'm going to apply a layer between the ESCs, or between the FETs if I can. So I'm going to try and get this basically across all of the metal contacts, but I don't want to get it on the top of the FETs. Now that I have that first coat on there, while it's still wet, I'll take this heat sink and place it on here. Yeah, you can see there's still a gap there, but I've kind of... This little uh, point right in there and that keeps this from getting clogged up wow 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 Right there, I belong here. All right, so it looks like it's all Okay, 
So here's what we have. This one might fail because it does seem like it's hard to tell whether these high spots on here are totally covered, but we're just going to go for it and see what one coat gives us. I think this is one coat. I want to say it's one coat on each side. We'll see if this works. If not, that's kind of understandable, but I just want to see if it'll work with one coat right here. This one, I am leaving this heat sink on, so I've kind of used the, the worry-free the silicone stuff as a way of gluing on this heat sink. And as I showed earlier, I did waterproof, like this board should be waterproofed anyway, but then I sealed around the heat sink. So it should be extra waterproof. This guy, we're going to be using this to control the ESCs. Right here will be our test motor in 2205, 2300 KV, an Ovonic 4S 1500 milliamp hour battery. Okay, very, very salty, like super duper salty, crazy salty. Okay, so for this test, I will be using this, the V-Fly Short Saver 2. What this will do is if the salt water does cause a bad connection on the ESC, which would cause it to draw more amps than it should, then this uh, Short Saver is going to shut off the electricity to the motors. Otherwise, if I didn't have this, the motor might just go crazy and potentially melt down. Okay, everything's working. Uh, there we go, our motor is turning on. Okay, so let's start out first with the motor not running. I'm just gonna dunk this in here. Okay. Oh, wow. All right, so far so good. Oh yeah, it's working. It's working, baby! Wow, that's actually, that's very, very effective. Okay, so success on the first try. Before we conclude, let's turn on our motor just a little bit. And then let's give this a little shaky shake in here. Okay, all right, wow, all right. I'm not exactly sure how it's better than Coat King, like what what Brandon did to make this a better formula, but it seems to be a better formula with a lib with with a single liberal coating applied. It somehow just sticks better, and it's less likely to drip off tall circuit board areas. So that's that's really good. This is really good. All right, this yeah. Okay, I think I'm a fan now. Good job, Brandon. Way to go, man. Way to make something for the FPV community and, uh, and you know, improve something and put it out there and make it, you know, better. Yeah, baby. Uh, so this ESC just passed with flying colors. We are going to test out this little guy right here. He's like that. Anyway, that doesn't really matter, but. So the motor works, we know it works. Let's go ahead and dunk this little guy in here. Uh, okay, let's dunk it the other way. Holy crap. Wowzers. All right. Wow. I, I really was pretty sure that wasn't going to work on the first try. All right, so the last test is to see how easy it is to remove this uh, FPV worry-free for soldering, or how easy is it to swap wires uh, after we've you know applied the coating because let's say these are motor wires and we want to swap them out or switch a motor or something like that okay. TS 100 soldering iron we're gonna start out at 310 degrees Celsius that's that's a kind of a mess if we can kind of stab through this coating here uh, okay let's try something else here it's very it's very slippery because it's basically just some type of silicone. Okay, now this part, this part is just, I think this is just always gonna be a mess. It's tricky because you can't really pull it out of the way because it just springs back into place. Maybe we can just sort of like rub it off. Yeah, we can kind of do that. And we'll, we'll obviously need to recoat this. Let's take it up to two th or th uh, 330, there we go. 
Now I have to be careful because, okay, because I don't want this to like fling out of the way. Yeah, so you can see we have some, we have some of the coating kind of holding the wire in place. So that's also kind of a bonus because then even if you don't have a great solder joint, the coating will kind of hold everything together and you're less likely to have a wire uh, come out. Let me get a razor knife and just kind of... Now this could be really tricky depending on, you know, the, the pad that you're cutting. Like if this was on a flight controller, you definitely want to be very careful to not scratch the flight controller pads. With the knife, we'll use some pads that way. Yes, be careful because it's pretty slippery. There we go, get some good solder contact and pull it out. There we go, okay. So we'll just try and get as much of the silicone off of here. Okay, we'll get our soldering iron. We'll add a bunch of solder to the iron. And then let's say we wanna put this back on here. So we'll heat this one up, heat those up. I'm kind of pressing it in there back onto the pad. Okay, I think they're together and there we go. I guess that's about as, you know, about as straightforward as it gets putting them back on there. So that's not too bad. It it's just it is annoying. I mean, it's, it's just not as easy as working with uncoated uh, wires. I think that's just kind of a, that's just kind of a given. I mean, the only thing that'd be easier would be conformal coating, but as we've seen with the previous tests, conformal coating just does not perform the same as this stuff does. And it doesn't seem to perform very well against salt water and, and against uh, physical abrasion and that kind of thing. Yeah, that's really ugly. Uh, but the main thing is you want to make sure your soldering iron is nice and hot. So 330 degrees Celsius or maybe even hotter. And then obviously you don't burn the pads. But then you really want to press it back into place to make sure you get past any uh, silicone uh, coating. I'm assuming this is silicone. It seems to be like silicone. Got, gotten past that test. So that's what you need to do. And then you just put some more on top of there and on both sides make sure it gets all over the place and then you're good to go. Hey, here's another fun fact that might be relevant in some cases. I left this ESC on here with the worry-free coating on there and it was clamped in this little, little gripper arm here. And when I took it out, it was smooshed and deformed. And I don't know if that really matters. I mean, it does matter, obviously, because it could mess with your waterproofing coating on here. But uh, just keep that in mind in case you have a zip tie holding something down that has the waterproof coating on it. Um, then it's probably going to start to dig into the coating and, and kind of deform it. And that could affect the waterproofing capability. So keep that in mind. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our goggles that show.